Well, good morning. It's good to see you and to be gathered here today as we come for our time of worship. We want to uh, lift up just a, a couple of announcements. Um, uh, sadly, we uh, lost Gordon Spangler this past uh, Thursday. He was 102 years old. Uh, we're going to be celebrating his life uh, here at Epworth. It'll be at um, 1030 on Wednesday. And uh, we want to encourage you, if you feel comfortable, to come and to be a part of that time. Also, uh, we will be uh, asking that everyone wear masks for that service. Um, I know it's odd, but this is how we're in the moment we're in today. So uh, we want to uh, lift that up. We will be live streaming uh, his service. So if you want to participate from home and don't feel like you can come out, I uh, would encourage you to be able to do that. It'll be on our YouTube channel. It won't be on Facebook Live, but it'll be on YouTube. And if you uh, go to YouTube and search for Chickasha UMC, uh, you'll find our channel, can connect uh, there and uh, be able to participate in the service from, from home. Um, that's really our one main announcement for, for this week. Uh, as we, uh, we want to welcome all those who are viewing from home, uh, or participating here uh, live and present in the service. We uh, give thanks for God's presence and God's glory. And uh, now uh, we will... Uh, turn our hearts and minds to God as we join together in our call to worship. <clears throat> God has abundantly cast God's seeds of love and hope upon us. Come, let us praise God who is so generous with us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You guys want to come play? <laughs> Good morning, everyone. <laughs> to start us off, we'll sing Amazing Grace, My Chains Are Gone.
So I'm doing time at Donaldson Elementary School, Greenville, South Carolina. I was in the sixth grade. I remember a student came to the door with a note for my teacher. And then she said in front of the entire class, Well, Wellerman, go to Principal Harrelson's office. All the other kids looked at me like, Oh, thank God it's him and not me. Principal Harrelson was as intimidating as they come. I asked the teacher, What have I done wrong? So I left my class and made the long walk to Mr. Harrelson's office. Back then, when you got called to the principal's office, it was a big deal. He said, come in, Wollaman. I want you to listen carefully, and I do not intend to repeat myself. You go down to Tyndall Avenue, and then I want you to go to number 18, and I want you to deliver this message to Jimmy Spain's mother. You tell her, that if he doesn't come into school today, I'm going to report her for truancy. Well, I take the note and I walk down the steps of the building. I leave the safety of the school grounds and I think to myself, oh my gosh, Jimmy was the meanest kid in the sixth grade. He could beat up any kid on the school ground and routinely did in part because he was supposed to be in the eighth or ninth grade. So I'm really worried about Jimmy Spain. And all the while, I'm wondering, what in God's name is truancy? Tyndall Avenue was just a couple of blocks from the school. And before I knew it, I was standing in front of Jimmy Spain's house. It was a mess. Then a man emerged from the house. He walked towards me, and I said, Uh, Mr. Spain? He laughed. Ha! Huh, there ain't no Mr. Spain, son. He put a big cigar in his mouth, and he got in a Buick. I walked fearfully up to the porch, knocked on the broken screen door, and there was Jimmy Spain, staring at me with those beady eyes of his. I froze. Then this woman pushed open the door. It was his mother, in the middle of the day, in a terry cloth bathrobe. And she said to me, what do you want? And I told her, uh, Principal Harrelson sent me? And she said, what does that old fool want? I tried to come up with some kind of excuse. It's uh, like a special day at school. It wouldn't be right if Jimmy's not there with us. She thought about it for a minute, and then she pushed him out the door. We walked back to Donaldson Elementary School. Neither one of us said a word. And even though we didn't talk, I felt like I was leading him back. I felt like he wanted to go to school that day. That made a big impression on me. That was the first time I felt a calling. The next time would be many years later when a bishop laid his hand on my head and ordained me. The bishop told me, God's got a message that needs to be delivered. God had a message to be delivered to the women at the empty tomb on Easter morning. Just like God had a message for me that day on Tyndall Avenue. And just like God has a message for us today. We come to our time of prayer. We want to be sure to lift those in our community app who are uh, in, in need of prayer. 
Uh, we have printed a few bulletins that are here available up front. There is the, the prayer list that's there. We maintain that in the, the church office as well. Uh, you can find it on our, our church website also. So we want to point out those places. Um, let us now, as we come before God, open our hearts to him in prayer. O oh, wondrous and generous God, your gifts are overwhelming. Your sun lights the way for our journey, and your stars punctuate our darkness. You give us living water to quench our thirst. Your bread of life opens the doors to eternal life. Your healing touch binds up our wounds, and your forgiveness washes us clean. A wondrous God, from the corners of earth, our praise erupts before you. The fields wave, and the trees shout their joy. From the deepest depths of our being, our prayers grope to find the words of adoration. For you are patient and kind, even when we have wandered away, lured by the trivial, attracted by quick solutions. For you are full of compassion and truth, O oh God, even when we stumble in our relationships and when we hesitate at the doors of justice. Come now, O oh wondrous and generous God. Bring comfort to those who agonize over broken relationships. Help us who mourn the death of what used to be Touch those whose lives and bodies are in need of your healing. Liberate those who are, whose full potential have been warped by addiction. Surprise those whose days are filled with sameness, with your joy that is unceasing. Come now, wondrous and generous God. Make this be, church be, be a place where seeds are grown, where joy is shared, where your peace is shaped, where dreams are born, where sorrow is graced, and where lip ripples of joy spread throughout the world. We pray to you, this our prayer, in the strong name of Jesus, who has taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture this morning comes to us from the Gospel of Matthew beginning in the 13th chapter, verses 1 through 9, and then 18 through 23. Listen for God's word for you. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such a great crowd gathered around him that he got into the boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds of the air came and ate them up. Other seed fell on the rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of so uh, uh, and they and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depths of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched. And since they had no, no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seed fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what, the, so, the, is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on the rocky ground, this is, are the ones that hear the word and immediately receive it with joy. Yet such a person has no root, but endures only for a little while. 
and when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, they, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the, the cares of the world and the lures of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for those who are sown on the good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it. For indeed, or who indeed bear fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Usually I have uh, Steve up here to keep me comfort, er, comfortable having company. And uh, uh, today, though, when we've had through this season a period where uh, our volunteers have been great to be able to be here every week. Uh, one of them managed to step on some glass yesterday and cut their foot and not be able to be here. So Steve's uh, working in the, uh, the TV room to make sure we're able to do the broadcast. Uh, also... Uh, Sherry, who usually is at the computers, has uh, had surgery, rotator cuff surgery on Friday, so she's going to be out for a bit. And uh, Benjamin's kind of man in both the, the sound booth and the, the computer presentations for us. So uh, all kind of filling in different roles today. Uh, Jesus taught his disciples. One of his uh, most familiar ways of teaching was to, to use parables. Uh, the parables, uh, I think, are a, a way that engages our mind, uh, engages our spirit, and uh, in a lesson about God's kingdom. That seems to always be the topic of the, the parables, the kingdom of God. Uh, Jesus teaches us about how uh, life in God's kingdom is, how we are to uh, be ready for it, to welcome it, to prepare ourselves for it. Uh, in this case, to hear and to listen. Um, hearing plays an important role in this scripture. Uh, the word of God is proclaimed, and it's those who hear it, but it's also about those who understand it, who turn out to be the most fruitful, about seeds that fall upon the path, or upon the rocky soil, or among the thorns, or the good soil. Um, I've often thought about this and wondered, what kind of soil am I? Uh, the truth is, different days, I suspect, I know I feel like different types of soil. Maybe that's how it is for you. Uh, I, I really kind of debated saying this a little bit this morning. Um, I'm not feeling like the good soil today. Uh, I, I was telling Angie uh, this morning, I just kind of, very rarely do I ever wish it wasn't Sunday, but this morning I just kind of felt like, gosh, I wish it wasn't Sunday. There's something about um, this moment where it feels like, I, I just don't feel like I'm prepared as good soil. Uh, maybe it's the, the stage of uh, the COVID-19 that we're in. I was prepared in the first months for uh, us to have a couple of months off. That seemed like an awful lot to give up. For us to have a couple of months where we would just be worshiping online uh, and worshiping through television together in different places and yet not together as the, the body of Christ. I was prepared that in March and April, Sometime in May, I thought, we'll be able to get back together, hopefully. Turned out to be into June. And, and then I thought, okay, we'll be in a place. I, I guess I uh, bought into some of the assumptions they had that we would see rates decrease in the summer. And instead, it's been anything but that. They've gone the other way. Um, in ways that are important, people have decided they need to stay uh, at home and not connected by being present in worship. And we're thankful that we have the ministry of, uh, of being online and, and on television. But, um, you know, it, it, there's something that just feels longing still. Um, 
about wishing to see and be together. Uh, pastorally, it's hard. Uh, I'm, I'm not saying this is a pity party for me. I'm just telling you, sometimes, you know, we go through periods where we don't feel like we're the good soil, maybe. Um, knowing when it's the time to go to visit someone or when we need to be safe and not making a visit. Um, they're they're hard, hard things that uh, feel very different about this time and how we minister uh, together. So as we think through uh, what type of soil are we? Are we soil that um, is like the path where it's just made vulnerable, the seed that's cast of God's kingdom upon our lives, and it has no way to even penetrate and just sets upon the surface of us, and the evil one comes to, to pluck it up and take it away. Maybe, maybe there's a shade of hopefulness in me, because I remember and know that, you know, if the birds come and they eat the seed and they carry it away, sometimes it can be planted a different place and can grow and prosper there. You know, can, that happens. Um, sometimes we even know as, uh, uh, you know, in farming, or I don't know about farming, maybe in growing a garden, you get volunteer plants that come up in places where you did not expect them to be. Maybe the seed washed to somewhere else that was a better place to grow. Maybe for some reason it spread, uh, and, and you get a volunteer that shows up in an unexpected place, maybe carried off. Um, Maybe even in those moments, there's still some hopefulness. The seed that falls into the rocky ground, maybe that's really what I feel. Uh, there's some good soil there, uh, but I feel a little jaded and edged, you know, right now. Uh, not very receptive. It gets a start, but is it going to be deep enough to really let faith sink in deep in my life? Received with joy. We certainly uh, have known folks in the life of the church over the years who come with joy and embrace the faith quickly and yet fade away too quickly. Um, we have to find depth of soil, don't we? Uh, otherwise, the sun scorches us. Uh, maybe a bit like yesterday's weather, a heat that just feels overbearing. Unless we develop deep roots of faith, uh, we are vulnerable to such times. The one among the thorns, maybe it's a bit about uh, the company we keep, those around us who um, maybe choke out the very hope and faith that we are in. Uh, I remember our son was in a period where he was kind of struggling some. He was with some friends, went to church with them, and came back with the story that their minister or youth director had told him of uh, that, you know, it takes a very strong man or woman to pull someone up who's down in a well, to reach down and to be able to pull someone up, um, takes someone with extraordinary strength. It's much easier for the person to be pulled down into the well with them than the one to be able to have enough strength to pull the other out. Uh, Sometimes there are places where we are vulnerable in life and sometimes we can just be choked out by the others uh, who are around us. That doesn't mean we need to only stick with the holy. Uh, we know Jesus spent a whole ministry um, where he was often scorned for being with the tax collectors and the outsiders, those who were seen as sinners, um, said he was a drunkard, uh, because of the people who he hung out with. Uh, Jesus, though, was one of those people of extraordinary strength, wasn't he? Um, he's our example, but we also have to be careful about um, our surroundings and the situation that we find ourselves in. We can be choked out, our faith, lured by the cares of the world. Isn't that an interesting phrase? Lured by the cares of the world and by the desire for wealth. Um, faith is not an easy thing always. Uh, sometimes it grows so naturally, but sometimes it's difficult. 
And then there's the seed that fell on the good soil. Produced well. Where it is heard and it's understood. Where God's faith comes to us and, and it just grows naturally. One of the things that's interesting, I, 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 the, the phrasing that Jesus uses, a hundredfold, sixtyfold, and thirty, um, wouldn't it have made more sense, 120, 60, and 30? I mean, if you just think of multiples. Um, did Jesus make a mistake in not saying 120? Or is there something about the completeness of 100 that says that God's grace, God's faith, God's mercy, the kingdom of God is something that is complete, um, different than what we might expect uh, a hundred and full, that sounds like a lot, uh, but historically it's not. Um, if you plant grain, it often produces well beyond a hundred fold. Is, um, is it that God's bounty is miraculous bounty of a hundred fold? Or is the hundredfold maybe the norm? And it says something to us about God's kingdom that's around us everywhere in the normal, in the regular expectation. I, you know, I don't want to, it, maybe it's both. Maybe it can be both, that God's kingdom is so generous and, uh, and abounding that as a sower, that's the most uh, interesting thing of this whole story, isn't it? Um, the seed, the soil, those are things we, uh, we deal with oftentimes, but maybe it's about the uniqueness of the sower who with abundant generosity scatters seeds of faith in God's kingdom all over the place. And um, in obscure places like upon the path, in the broken places like the rocky soil, even amongst the sinning world in the thorns and the good soil, maybe God's abundance and generosity is about the work of the sower. And maybe it's about God's kingdom being found in the ordinary. Um, I should have asked him for permission. I wasn't thinking about it at the time and didn't have time to call him uh, Friday. Uh, so if I, I, I don't think he'll mind my telling this. Uh, Friday, uh, Bruce Storms dropped by the office and I had a lot of things I needed to get done at the moment, but, you know, Bruce can be a little bit, you know, he's not easy to push away, right? And uh, so he came into the office and just sat down, and we just started talking. And um, we spent a good while visiting with each other, and um, after we finished, he, he said, uh, Scott, can I pray for you? And I, I said, absolutely. Um, and so he prayed for me. And he said, you know, I had a couple of doctors who just come into the clinic this week, or not doctors, a couple of pastors who came into the clinic this week. And when each of them were there, I prayed for them. And, and I just thought, I'd, you know, I should be praying for you too. And so um, we, we prayed together. And um, he said, you know, when I early... Again, I think maybe a, a slip. He said early in my ministry, uh, his practice of medicine um, or ministry, maybe they're the same, right? Uh, he said early in my ministry, I was uncomfortable doing that. I was focused on all the things I needed to do as a doctor. And, and then he said some years back, it, it just kind of occurred to me that I should probably... Uh, be tending to their spiritual needs as well. And so I just began to listen. And God said to me, I'll lead you. And so there are times whenever it seemed very clear that God was speaking to me and I heard and I understood and was able to uh, pray with somebody during the time of need. As we were wrapping up the conversation, I, um, I said to him, I want you to know um, Nobody in all my years of ministry has ever prayed with me as many times as you have, uh, just for me. Um, and, and it's not been a lot of times, but there have been 
over a half dozen, maybe 10 or 12 times, that just during the course of things that are going on, and not every time we're together, but where he will stop and he'll pray for me. Other people in congregations I've served have done that. I know that I'm on many of your prayer lists and that you pray for me in a regular way, but there was something about that moment I wanted to affirm, and it, and it really kind of brought me back to this whole lesson um, that the sower is sowing, and, and it's about those who hear and understand And maybe in the commonness of scattered seeds, maybe in the regular analogy of somebody who's a worker um, doing work and in seeds growing up to produce the fruit that's expected in the normal places of life, maybe all around us there's the abundance of God's seed that's been scattered in there. Maybe if we just open our ears, we'll hear God speaking to us about God's kingdom that's around us. Might be about any person that we come into contact during the course of our week. Bruce said he began to listen and he began to hear that there were times when God would say, pray with these people. Um, Maybe in the course of your work, somebody comes along that that's your opportunity Maybe if you listen, you hear that God's given you an opportunity. Maybe if you listen, um, the person who happens to be pumping gas at the other place across the way, just something about the conversation opens a door that allows you to speak a word. Doesn't have to be weird. Usually it's not. Only one time in my whole ministry have I ever asked someone if I could pray with them or for them that they asked and said no that does happen it's happened to me once Um, doesn't happen very often people usually are looking for such a moment for God to break in I think God scattered seeds all around us and um, even if we're not feeling like that day we happen to be the good soil Maybe there's just enough for it to take root. Maybe it's that we're all of that. We're all of that. And then some part of us is the good soil. And that's when we're able to hear and to listen and to understand. The thing I'm certain of is that God's never going to stop scattering seed. The question is, uh, how will I receive it? Amen. Usually I have a minute to kind of catch my breath, but you know, since Steve's not here to help me out, I've got to jump into the next place. We uh, come to a moment where we offer our gifts in return. Um, it's not just a financial gifts that we give, it's a life of service. It's how we uh, respond to God and uh, sharing and witness, all these things. And yet this moment is a, a symbol for us of how we offer up parts of our lives to God in return. If you're home, and um, one of the ways that we do that is financially, you can uh, go to our website, www.epworth.info. There's a green button on there, probably green for a reason, I don't know. A green button, if you click on it, you can make your contribution online. Uh, U.S. mail still works, so uh, you can mail a check if you'd like to, uh, to 420 West Iowa. and that's our, our address. Uh, if you're here and present, you can make a check or contribution by leaving that in the plates at the close of the service if you haven't done so already. Um, let all of these be symbols of our life in response to all that God has done for us.
Let us stand and join together in the Apostles' Creed. I'll give the band a heads up that this is probably time to come up. So, Let us join together in sharing in our affirmation of faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For our song ascending forth, we will do You Are So Good to Me. Let us join together in our sending forth. God has placed the seed of love and forgiveness in your heart. Tell of the good news of God's abundant generosity.
Go, be a witness to all the miraculous possibilities of hope and peace. Amen and amen.